G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, lunchtime here in Australia on Sunday, so again, sort of, you know, Saturday evening, and we can see a little bit of a bounce back. Now, has the weekend retracement, have we sort of seen the worst of it? I would like to sort of hope that we have, and also I've found something that I've, I think, you know, gives me and hopefully uh, yourselves as well a little bit more hope that maybe we've seen the you know the bottom but we'll have to wait and see right look 1.367 trillion dollars so again still saying above the 1 trillion dollar mark which is good not quite the 1.5 million 1.5 trillion sorry dollar mark that I thought we would hold we definitely went lower BTC dominance 45% ETH dominance 15% and gas Good Lord, I can't remember the last time I saw uh, gas prices at six. So very, very interesting. All right, again, there's been a bounce back, so it's looking good over 24 hours, but over seven days, still not looking great. But anyway, what's done well in the last 24 hours? You know, there's been a little bit of a bounce. Who's our best performer? All right, Harmony, 11%. Sushi, 9%. Quantum, uh, Cosmos, Hedera, Hashgraph. So we've got a number of coins that have moved up a little bit. But as I showed yesterday, it's green one day and red the next. And generally, they keep sort of, you know, shedding a little bit more than whatever they've made. Now, not always. There's always outliers. But again, generally, the market's in a bit of a downtrend at the moment. But maybe we've seen the bottom. All right. What about losers in the top 100? Has anything been really hammered? Nothing sort of too bad. So Celsius Network down a little bit. Leo Token down a little bit. Uh, Nexo, Internet Computer. Oh. I mean, this just continues to go yeah, lower and lower. Uh, very hard for anyone who sort of bought into the hype on internet computer. Unfortunately, I mean, you would be down massive percents there. But, you know, that's crypto. And that's why, as I said, you know, I really like to put most of my money uh, into Bitcoin. And then sort of second is Ethereum. And then I'll really go start chasing all the altcoins and things like that. But look, only a couple of losses. And then we're getting into the stable coins. So generally things... You know, not looking too bad from that point, from that sort of perspective, I should say. All right, but here is what we need to look at: fear and greed index, still at twenty-two. So there's still a lot of fear in the market, and this has been lower. I mean, I think this got down to ten not that long ago. And I mean, look, where is it? I think it's maybe here, actually. Yep. So seven days, there we go. We can see right down here, it got down to 10. So did it, it probably went a little bit lower. I don't know if that's the absolute bottom. I think the bottom might've been here. So we might've got down to, you know, sort of one. And Max, let's have a look. Has it ever been lower than 10? Uh, we can go here, so on the 22nd of August, there we go, it has been lower. But that was basically at the absolute bottom, uh, I would say, of the bear market uh, go through 2000. Oh, no, actually, the bottom of the bear market would have been sort of 2018-ish, I think. But anyway, there's a lot of greed, uh, sorry, a lot of fear in the market still. So that goes to show you that the market is still very, very apprehensive because they're expecting a lot, of, uh, a lot more downside, most likely, or at least they're just unsure. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart because this is the one I always like to focus on. All right. So as we can see, we did have that other sellout. And now again, look, we down into 29,000. I saw Bitcoin at 30,000 yesterday and I, I didn't hit the buy button. Uh, and look, you know, it's back to sort of 32,000 now. So could I have bought cheaper? Yes. But anyway, what I have noticed though, is that have a look at all these candle closes. We haven't had a candle close below sort of 31,500, let's say. We've definitely wicked below, but we haven't had any candle closes. And look at this, pretty good rejection there. Uh, it stopped there, uh, and not rejection, like rejection to the downside. Rejected the downside, went up. Rejected the downside, went up. Now we are still in a bit of a falling wedge pattern there. But generally falling sort of wedges will break to the upside in a bull market, in a bear market, they can continue to go down. But look here, all these closes 
they haven't even made it down to as low as where these closes were. We had closes down here at 30,000 back in January and they acted as support and now that's where we're holding. So I just get the feeling like maybe the bottom's in. Could be completely wrong and we'll have to wait and see, but something else that I found extremely interesting was here. This is the relationship between Bitcoin and its expiry dates. Expiry date, big sell-off, massive pump. Expiry date, so it's the Friday, the last sort of week of the month. Big sell-off, pump, sell-off, pump, big sell-off. One of the biggest sort of sell-offs that we've sort of seen. So could we be expecting a big massive pump? Where again, Bitcoin maybe gets up to around that kind of $80,000 level. And then again, maybe retraces back down to the $60,000 level. You know, it's hard to say that there's not a relationship between options expiries when you see things like this. It shows that there quite clearly is. And so Monday morning, which again, it's only sort of Saturday evening stateside time. It'll be Monday morning stateside time. So not for Australians. We've got to wait till kind of Monday sort of night, Tuesday thereabouts. Could we see a big massive explosion to the upside? I'm kind of hoping that that might be the case because again, this has been one of the worst corrections we've ever seen in Bitcoin history. So new things are currently happening. So does that mean we could see an even bigger correction? Yeah, look, absolutely possible, but I'm just not sure that's what we're gonna see. So anyway, what I wanna do is move on to this article here. So this is about DeFi. I really think DeFi is going to be a massive game changer. And we've had such a big correction since the DeFi summer, you know, last year where things were at, you know, absolute peaks uh, to sort of where we are now. And I mean, look, they weren't at the peaks of DeFi last summer. They got high. DeFi was at a peak, you know, th sort of three months ago, like most coins were. Everything got really, really, you know, pumped up. But what I found interesting was here. Some of the smartest people from traditional finance are putting efforts into making developments there and doing things that are going to change the way all of the traditional all of the traditional way markets operate. So this is speaking about DeFi. The crypto space dwarfs the rest of technology sector in terms of the number of engineers innovating in the sector. And particularly in DeFi, there's you know tons of DeFi projects coming out here. Sorry, coming out, you know, endlessly. Now for me, I'm very, very careful with the newer ones coming out. I wanna see that they're gonna be around for some time and that they've got good teams and, you know, it, it, even a good team's not simply enough. I wanna see that they're gonna be around for a while because a number of D pro DeFi projects, they're just flashing the pans. They're like I, ICOs back in 2017 and rug pulls, you know, iron finance and like all sorts of stuff. Bad code where there's massive hacks, you know, maybe still a rug pull, you know, who knows. So for me, I'm really focusing on ones that have been out for a while, but I am dabbling in a few few others that haven't been out for a while. But look, this is the DeFi sector, and this is over the last three months. Uni, down 40%. Link, down 34%. What do we got? Aave, 42%. Luna, I mean, this was touted as being something, you know, sort of truly transformative and amazing down 70%, Comp down 36%, Lend down 41%, which is basically of a s synthetic something that I am super bullish on and we're gonna have a look at is down 63%. I mean, you can go down the list. There's so many different projects here, you know, KNC down 45%, Carver 30%, Ren, you know, nearly 70%. <sighs> There's a saying, Fortune, favors the brave. Now, I am in absolutely no way telling you that you should go and buy any of these coins. The market is very turbulent at the moment. We still need to wait and see really what's gonna happen. We could see way more downside. But fortune favors the brave. Are you brave enough to say, we're at the bottom of the market and get into some of these altcoins if you believe DeFi is gonna change you know, the way finance happens in the future, which I do. I think the biggest money is going to come from getting onto the right DeFi play, you know, as early as you possibly can. I think it's going to dwarf Bitcoin uh, returns and, you know, you name it. 
It's just, you know, trying to find which one is the right play. So we're going to have a look at some of these. Now, these are just ones I like. I'm not offering you any financial advice. Uh, and again, I would be very careful dabbling in any alts at the moment. I would, you know, I would probably stick to Bitcoin unless you have been in the space for a while. Or again, you you know, you just think, yep, the bottom's in. I did go and buy some altcoins just not long ago. And it's some of these altcoins. I'm willing to take the risk. I'm not putting my life savings into it. It's just some money. But I think the bottom for Bitcoin's in. I don't think we're going to go too much lower. And if we do, I'll accept further losses uh, on these altcoins. Because again, it's, it's not... It's not money that I need tomorrow. It's money that I can afford to lose. I just really believe that DeFi is going to be one of the biggest revolutions coming from the crypto space. You know, Bitcoin's great and I'm still investing in Bitcoin. Don't don't think that I'm not. But I think some of these DeFi plays will really be, you know, if they're the ones that I'm lucky enough to be getting in at the right price, yeah, will, you know, not just revolutionize finance in the future, but, you know, make life-changing wealth for me. That's what I'm hoping. Again, never financial advice. So let's have a look. All right, Uniswap. This is Uniswap over the last six months, how it's performed. I mean, you can see, you could buy it for $4. I got some at $5. And then again, I, you know, sort of doubled my money. It got up to $10 and I sold out and I wish I had kept it. But look at Uniswap's maximum price. It was basically trading at about $45. And this was not that long ago. This was literally only a few months ago. You can currently pick uni up for $16. How many 16s go into 40? Let's say 45. Roughly three. You can currently buy uni for a third of its price from its old all-time high. I definitely jumped on some uni today absolutely 100% jumped on uni I really like uni I think it's got uh, lots of long-term value and again you know the uni token at the moment isn't really you know it doesn't have a whole lot of value other than the price going up and down but there is talk that you're going to be able to stake the uni token and claim some of the uh, some rewards from uni in the future and that's why I'm getting into uni I like the idea of that you know, a simple governance token doesn't really do you too much. You need a governance token that has some value and there's talk that the Uniswap token will be able to collect some of the fees that Uniswap makes in the future. And so that's why I'm buying Uni. I really like it. It's, you know, the biggest and most popular decks out there. But look, there's some other ones coming. The Gravity decks from Cosmos is also sounding pretty good. And that's something I'll be focusing on. But Uniswap, I really like it. And again, all I see is right out. I know it's been as high as $44 and I currently got some for $16. I'm happy with that. I don't care if it goes down to $10 or $4. I believe in the project and I know that once it goes back up to its old all-time high and I know it'll do it at some stage, I just don't know when, I'm going to triple any money that I just put in today. Again, never financial advice. Aave, same thing. This is just going back three months. Three months. Ave was at six hundred and sixty-four dollars. You're currently being able to buy it for less than two hundred. You're tripling and almost a half your money if you're buying Ave now, and it goes back to all-time highs. And if it gets back to an old all-time high, do you think it's just going to dive and fall back down here again? Unlikely. Not impossible. Definitely could. But it's likely that it gets to its old all-time high, has a retracement, comes back and tests it a few times before it breaks out in the next bull run. And now look, that may not be for years. Who knows? But all I think is that not only can Aave get back to $600, I think it can go much higher. A lot of people are saying Aave can get to you know, $1,000, $2,000. So if you're buying it at less than $200 and it goes to $1,000, you have 5 extra your money. These are the kind of exponential returns that can be found. But again, they say fortune favors the brave. So you've, you know, you, you got to be brave. But what we need to also remember is fortune, uh, is sorry, uh, 
you know, fool's money can be separated from them fairly quickly. I, don't, I can't remember the exact saying now. I had it before. So, you know, is this the lowest that it can go? No, maybe not. And is it guaranteed that Ave is ever going to make it back to its all-time high? No, it's not guaranteed. But for me, I'm confident that it will, so I bought some Ave today. All right, Terra Luna, again, I mean, look at this. This was a really hyped-up project, and it got as high as $22. And now, you can buy it for $5. But what does it sort of look like here from May? It's really sold off the bulk of it, and it's trading at prices where it roughly traded, you know, back in February. So it had this breakout, traded sideways, had this big, you know, pop, fell down, fake out, fell down. And now it's really been kind of trading. And I think this is what we could call a fair price for Luna at $5. Not saying it couldn't go lower, but you buy it at $5 and it makes it back to $22. That's a 4x on your money. What are the chances that Luna probably goes higher if it makes it back to 22 in this bull run? I would say pretty good. I like the idea of forexing my, my, my money. Now, I didn't buy any Luna today. Uh, I may buy Luna on the next run. We'll have to wait and see. But again, this just sounds like a bloody good buy. And, and there's a, again, Luna was a fairly hyped up project and it's just not hyped up by pure hype. Got a good team behind it, good platform, you know, good tokenomics and things like that. Uh, it rated well on token metrics uh, and I like token metrics. So, again, I, I bought some of a little bit more, uh, but this looks like a pretty good buy. All right, Chainlink. I mean, one of the, you know, the big OGs in this coin has performed amazingly well since it came out. Now, it still has corrections, like all coins, and look at the correction it's had. This was trading at $52. Let's just round it up. Excuse me. $53 on the 10th of May. That's only about sort of a month ago. Getting close to a month and a half, but a month and a half ago, this was at $52. You can currently buy it for $16. Again, you're basically going to almost 3 4 extra money if Chainlink gets back to its old all-time highs. There's people saying that Chainlink can possibly go to $200 uh, plus dollars. And again, if you're buying it at less than $20, that's a 10x a 10x on your money if it does that again never financial advice you've got to do your own research don't just simply you know listen to me or anyone else for that matter and go oh they're saying you know this could 10x it, it could whether it will yeah hard to say but i like those odds again i didn't buy any chain link today today i bought uniswap ave synthetics uh, and i picked up some voyager uh, voyager something i wanted to get a few more of and i don't have voyager up here but Chainlink, oh, at $15, that sounds pretty good, considering not that long ago, it was at $52. All right, so Synthetics Network. This is a coin that I'm super bullish on. And look, it just hasn't done too well in the last little while. And it's definitely slipped way down the ratings, unfortunately. Like it was uh, up, I think, near the top 20s, and now it's about 75 but we're gonna have a look. There's lots of things still being built. Now, here we go. Synthetics Network was 24, I think it was about $28 actually. You can't get the exact top there. And depending on the uh, exchange you're looking at, but it, uh, we'll just go by this. It says $25 here. We'll round it up, $26. You can currently buy it for $6. Less than $6. Well, no, probably about $6. That's a pretty good return should this start to make its way back. I like Synthetics Network a lot. I love that they've finally got the uh, L2 going for at least the staking part, so you're not you know, losing money uh, when you're trying to stake and all the rest of it. Now they've just got to get the rest of the platform to come across the L2, and that is actually happening. So what I wanted to do is go to here. So this is our blog.synthetics.io. A little dash of hopium. <laughs> so I'm not going to read this whole article because it's quite big and it's written uh, by Kane himself who was one of the kind of founders of synthetics and I mean look at all the things that are kind of going on. Right so V3 uh, and V2 split. Uh, Coenta they've uh, got a new sort of partner in Coenta. 
uh, the, the scope of V2, you know, shorts and futures and all sorts of things happening, you know, revamped loans, L2 staking migration, which again has already sort of happened, L2 debt pool merge, L2 and front running. So they are looking at ways to stop front running to prevent it because that's what a lot of big uh, whales and that, uh, particularly institutions and that, they try and front run stuff. Uh, and so they're looking at ways how to stop that. So I really, really like that. And look, again, th this is massive. There's all sorts of things going on. Governance, you know, putting it all together, the path forward. I'm a massive bull on synthetics. Uh, and I this is something I want to hold long term. Don't get me wrong. I plan on selling, uh, you know, probably still 50% of it when I think, you know, it's got to, you know, the point where we're probably going to have a decent market correction. But that doesn't mean I'm not bullish on it. Uh, I'm going to sell some Bitcoin when I feel like we get to points that it's a good time to sell some. And I'll do the same with Ethereum. But synthetics is definitely something I plan on holding long term. Uh, and again, there's lots of stuff coming out. And this article is not even that old. It's only 18th of May, uh, 21. So again, a little over sort of a month ago. So again, it's very, very hard to get into the market <laughs> when you see things like this. You know, the extreme fear, it's still very high. And particularly into these coins when you see in the last three months how far they've come down very very hard but as I spoke yesterday do you have what it takes to become rich because the rich they aren't buying into this kind of stuff they aren't well that's not true everything's still at such a discount at the moment but basically they're not buying into the things that are pumping and breaking all new time highs. They're waiting for market corrections to buy things. And again, they've done their research and they don't just ape in and just go all in. Like I bought stuff today, but I didn't throw everything I had at it. I just bought into it and I'm going to happily scale into certain things when I feel like they're at a really good price. And when I feel like Maybe this market's getting ready to turn. I do get the feeling this is going to happen. And it may start on Monday. But if it doesn't and the market corrects and goes down further, all good. I've got more money. I'll just really, you know, again, focus mainly on sort of Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I am happy to throw a few dollars at a few of the altcoins that I really like. And again, DeFi is where I think truly life-changing wealth is going to come from. It's not that you can't do it from Bitcoin and Ethereum, but they've already sort of, you know, really started to pump. These DeFi projects, most of them aren't more than a year or two old. You are still super early. It's just trying to decide out of all these different ones, you know, which, you know, couple, because there will be, you know, a couple of really, you know, obvious winners, and then there'll be some others that'll just do all right, and then a the majority of them probably won't make that much money at all and unfortunately will disappear that is the hard part i don't have those answers you know i just you know go by what my gut sort of telling me from all the information that i find out there all right that's it for me sunday time to go and have some lunch stay safe be kind to one another looks like it's pretty good at the market in the market at the moment there are at least a little you know a couple of little gains hopefully it lasts and i'll see you next time